Hey folks, salam alaikum. So I said I was going to make a video addressing the last couple of actions this year um, of 2023. And the first one has to do with one that was led by PSL just a few days ago in Phoenix um, in solidarity with Tyree Nichols. I hope I'm saying his first name correctly, um, but apologies if I'm not. Um, and then the second one was one a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was a drag queen, or, or dra not just drag queen, but a drag protest um, against all these bills in Arizona and around the country tar targeting, um, you know, gender expression, drag performances, and so forth, right? So I just wanted to critique both of these a little bit. Um, I'll try not to make this too long, but I found both of these actions um, quite problematic, mainly for the fact that they were just... Uh, very declawed, very watered down, and very toothless. Um, so PSL is Party for Socialism and Liberation. They've been around in Phoenix for at least a few years. Um, I remember working with them here and there. Even though I'm an anarchist and they're a socialist organization, I actually found that their actions a few years ago were pretty good. Um, they usually had actions at ASU. Um, and most of them, at least the ones that I went to, you know, they had some fire to them. They were had various elements of direct action. They got noisy. They got the attention of of, of crowds and so forth, which if you're trying to do a protest, um, you want to get people's attention, right? You want to get people's attention to your cause. And they, they did pretty good at that. I always remember they had pretty solid actions a few years ago. And that seemed to have changed at some point. Like, I think the last one I attended was maybe three years ago where it was like 10 people at the state capitol and on a Sunday or something and nobody was even there. It really didn't make any sense. But I don't want to go into the past. Um, I do know there's been a lot of call outs um, recently and over the years against PSL nationwide um, for various issues, um, you know, they've been engaging in or people have problems with. Um, I, I had to bring up what was it, just six, to, it was last summer, I had to bring up the fact that um, one of their organizers uh, was was collaborating with a state trooper uh, very blatantly. Um, and I caught it on video and stuff, and I, you know, I posted it out there um, to bring attention to this, that this is a security culture issue, right? Well, one of the main organizers or founders or whatever of this PSL Phoenix group uh, just end endlessly argued with me, bringing up all this stuff like personal attacks, various stuff uh, that had nothing to do with what I was addressing and then blocked me. I mean, it was very, very childish. So anyway, I don't want to go too much about, on about the past stuff, but, you know, there's been issues with them and I'm far from the only one. So anyway, they put up this flyer like, I don't know, it was a couple days in advance for an action on Saturday. Location was Phoenix City Hall. And City Hall, um, you know, this was for Saturday evening starting at 5 o'clock. So, it, you know, it gets dark in an hour or so, hour and a half afterwards. City Hall is one of those places downtown where, especially at that hour and on a Saturday, you're not going to have any audience, right? The only people that are going to be there are the people that... Uh, were invited to come or had heard about the event specifically. You're not going to get attention from any people on the outside, You're, you know, downtown. There's just not a lot of things going on downtown in that particular area on that day and time. There's plenty of stuff going on in downtown at that time in other places downtown, but not there. So anyway, they even put in their post that they were going to take the streets. That was one thing they put in there. I would estimate that when I got there, which was about 35 minutes late or so, um, there was a crowd of, if not 100 people, it might have been, I mean, I'm, I'm not perfect with my counting. I want to say 100. It may have been more like 80 at the time I got there, 80, 90. Um, and there were speeches going on, speak, speech, speaker after speaker after speaker, right? And Which is fine up to a point, but, you know, you can't have actions that are just people speaking. Uh, you can't be having actions that are just about people live streaming people speaking. And they had a bunch of tables up, maybe two or three, you know, promoting their party and their party's agenda, you know, socialism and this and that, and some of their um, paperwork, booklets, pamphlets, etc. cetera. Uh, anyway, I waited around and I don't know, it was about... I want to say 6.15, 6.30 was the last of the speeches, and that was it. 
not only did nobody take the streets, there wasn't any marching at all. And the strange thing about it was there was stuff going on downtown. Um, just a block away, um, there was a, a whole crowd of people going into a theater there. Um, and I know that there's other events downtown. You know, there's 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 always functions and things, especially on a Saturday night downtown. If there's not a ball game, um, which attracts cra huge crowds of people, you know, there's bars, there's concerts, there's things going on. And, you know, even if people felt it was kind of risky to take the streets, there's no reason with the numbers that we had that people couldn't have at least taken the sidewalks, marched around, chanted some good chants, and gotten the attention of people. Because if you're not getting the attention of people, then you're basically um, preaching to the choir, which is what this was. It's like you got people at the front speaking to the people gathered there, and everybody's already pretty much, you know, on the same page. When it comes to the, the the horrible murder that happened, you know, by the pigs in Detroit, or not was it not Detroit? Sorry, um, hang on a second. I'm drawing a blank. There's been so many freaking police shootings; it's unreal. Um, I don't, I, you know, I'm drawing a blank right now. It was Memphis, I think, is what it was. Um, I'm gonna, you know, if I got it wrong, it's kind of embarrassing, but I will. Um, make a note of it after this video gets posted. But anyway, um, yeah, I think it was Memphis is where this happened. But um, you got to, you can't just preach to the choir. And you, it, it also is kind of pointless to have an action where you're just going to have live streams or videos to put out there. It's like, well, then in that case, why did any of us need to show up? I mean, you know, like literally it could have been a Zoom meeting. You know what I'm just saying? And like, yeah, it's good to be, it's good to go to actions and do things in person. But, you know, it was just, I mean, there was no action. It was not an action. It was literally just showing up to City Hall to listen to speeches. And I'm not saying there was anything wrong with the speeches. I didn't listen to all of them. But um, what was pointed out on their page by a number of people, and I shared the screenshot I took, was that they were not listening to black folks. They were not organizing um, or rather allowing black fo folks to take the lead and to organize. They weren't collaborating with any type of um, Black Lives Matter affiliated folks who might want to organize, say, a, a Black Lives Matter rally. There, there wasn't any collaboration. Um, they, they just weren't, they, they weren't listening to black folks, let alone, um, you know, I don't want to just say include black folks because, again, that's like who's doing the including? Is it white people? No, you got to take a step back and just let black folks, you know, speak for themselves and lead for themselves, right? Because the bottom line is police violence um, mainly targets black folks and indigenous folks and brown folks. That's mainly who's targeted by police violence. And those are the voices that are the most important to hear, not a bunch of white people. And honestly, it seemed like every time I was looking at whoever was speaking at the time, it was white person after white person after white person. It wasn't all white people, but I would say it was a majority of white speakers. And that's a problematic dynamic. Um, you know, white people need to do more listening and less talking, um, probably including me. So, <laughs> but anyway... Um, yeah, it was just very disappointing, and people were calling this out on their own page, and what did they do? They just deleted the comments, rather than be, you know, and, and, and that's shady. That's shady for an organization to just be deleting the comments, especially the comments of, you know, black people and other people of color. Instead of instead of taking a step back and listening to what people are saying, uh, they just delete it, and, and it's, it's, it's very sketchy. Um, it's just very, very sketchy, the way this org um, handled it, and so, you know, I don't think people should take risks they're not comfortable with. Like, I don't think it's fair to demand people to get in the streets or not. But I don't know. Nobody really took initiative, including me, to yell out, hey, does anybody want to march? I, I think anybody could have yelled that out or if they had a megaphone, gotten on the megaphone and said, hey, does anybody want to go for a march? Um, and, you know, it's like, you know, have a, have a show of hands. Anybody down for a march? You know, we, we can keep it safe. We can, you know, stay on the sidewalks. Um, and if people feel comfortable to get in the streets, you know, we can do that too. We can have a mix of both. 
um, you know, it doesn't always necessarily have to be discussed out loud. Uh, there were about six or seven cops with the Phoenix Red Squad, um, otherwise officially known as their community response squad. They were kind of standing in the background um, watching, but I didn't see really any um, other police presence in that. Um, you know, you play these actions by ear, right? Sometimes you can go march, get in the streets for a while, and you can be in the streets for a good 10, 15 minutes, uh, or maybe just five minutes before they start sending um, more and more cops and you get loud orders on their their loudspeakers and stuff to get out of the street and all that. And then maybe you make a decision to get back on the sidewalk at that point. They leave, you go back into the streets. You know, there, there are ways that you can do these things without people getting arrested if you're strategic about it. But none of that was done. And it doesn't surprise me because really what this organization um, – this organization does not stand, I mean, for black lives, for people of color, um, you know, or, you know, or marginalized people. What they do is they insert themselves into existing struggles that black people, people of color, other marginalized people are experiencing. They insert themselves into these types of, of you know, dynamics. And essentially what they do is they co-opt them and dominate them. I mean, it's pretty, and 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 it's mo, you know, especially an organization that what do you see is mostly white people. I mean, it's it's mostly white people, um, you know, at the tables and speaking and speaking. You know, it's it's not acceptable. Um, that's all I can think of right now about PSL and that action the other night. It was just, I'd consider it zero percent effective. I mean, it was just a gathering, listening to a bunch of speakers, and it's like it was preaching to the choir. Um, not everything everybody should agree with that was spoken, but, you know, I didn't, you know, but, you know, you, you know, not everybody there is a Marxist Leninist, obviously, um, you know, you have anarchists there, you have other types of communists and so forth, and probably your garden variety liberals as well, and your undercover, you know, cops and right wingers and that kind of shit. But, um, but yeah, so moving on, um, so a little before that, like, I think it was like a week or two, I think it was maybe two weeks before that. Maybe it was just a week before. I don't remember, but there was a rally at the state capitol on a Sunday at 1 p.m. And that was, um, I don't even know, it wasn't run by an org that I know. It was just a few people, but um, unless I'm just drawing a blank or something, it, it was this combination protest having to do with the attacks in the legislature targeting um, gender expression and drag um, drag performances especially but you also had a, a, a rally there that had already been planned um, against you know or for rather um, for the right to have an abortion and against the attacks on Roe versus Wade and so forth um, and so they kind of combined things right well this was another one where it was just about an hour of speakers and then they decided to have a walk um, on the sidewalk around the Capitol now, at 1 o'clock on, on a Sunday at the state capitol, nobody's there. So again, it's like you're preaching to close – it's like you might as well have a protest in the middle of the desert or out in the forest because the state capitol is always problematic for any actions because it's it's so isolated. Uh, it's isolated from downtown. Um, the way the roads are around it, the way all the buildings are around there um, – it's like you could have 10,000 people there and unless you go directly by the Capitol or directly to the Capitol, you're never going to see it. Um, it's it's not it, – it, it's it, it's like you might as well just you know have your rally in a basement. I mean nobody's going to see you except you know whatever streamed on live stream or, or filmed or photographed and put out later. But it's, it's a terrible location because you're not getting any attention. Nobody's inside the Capitol on a Sunday. And even if you're on a regular day where there's tons of people there in the Capitol, they don't give a shit. I mean, they don't. Um, there was also excessive um, police presence. Drones were flying overhead. Um, you had state police uh, in various areas kind of observing from a distance also. Um, and, and of course, observing through the drones, the drones were very invasive. You could constantly hear them buzzing around. Um, and right when I parked my car, there was one very low in altitude, like right over my head. And it's like, God, it's like, I'm afraid if I open my purse, you know, they're going to, they're going to see like my debit card number. They're going to see like what's on my driver's license or whatever through a damn camera on the drone. That's that close. I mean, it's so invasive. 
And this is what the cops do. It shouldn't surprise any of us. But I left right at the time uh, they were getting everybody on the sidewalk. They had march. They had these uh, movement police, peace police, all this stuff demanding people don't break any laws. One of the ladies speaking, possibly one of the organizers, was like, "Don't break any laws because if you get char, if you get fined, I get fined. If you get arrested, I get arrested." Well, that's not actually true. Okay, and this is a problem with the nonprofit industrial complex and this kind of liberal bullshit at actions is, you know, the cops are going to charge whoever they want. I mean, they charged me with a bunch of bullshit in 2020, like, you know, felony aggravated assault against police, uh, being have being an as associate of a street gang that didn't even exist. Right. Cops are going to do what cops are going to do. But if we're really in solidarity and standing up, you have each other's back. So if the cops do put a bunch of stupid charges on people, you fight them. You get lawyers to have your back. Lawyers that specialize. You know, there's this cool bird here. Let me see if I can. Ah, it flew away. I heard this buzzing right next to me. And it was this little bird that came very, very close. But as soon as I start to turn the camera around, you know, it's gone. Oh, well, it was really cute, really cool. It got really close to me. Anyway, um, I don't want to make this too long. My videos always tend to be, but, but yeah, I mean, you don't go, it's not true generally. Like if someone's going to get in the street and the cops are going to arrest them for getting in the street, they're not going to then go and arrest the organizer that's on the grass. That just doesn't typically happen. And if it does, it's easy to fight that and get it thrown out of court. It's very easy. Um, you know, and again, there's legal counsel typically available when it comes to protests and so forth. So it's fear mongering, and that's what these kind of very ultra liberal, non profity kind of actions uh, always perpetuate: is fear, fear, fear. Don't do this, or you'll get arrested. Don't do that, or you'll get arrested. When we're in, this is 2023. There's been a lot of shit going down. There's been shit going down in this country since before it was even founded. Um, you know, I mean, and again, it's like these seem to be more privileged people that don't really understand. Uh, the actual history of the United States, the experience of black people, the experience of indigenous people, um, the experience of LGBT, two-spirit folks um, who are a lot more marginalized than they are uh, that, you know, can't come to an action like that because maybe they're undocumented or maybe they're, there's a warrant out on them so it's not safe for them to come. Or maybe they're homeless. Maybe they're experiencing a lot of shit these people aren't experiencing so they can't come to something like that. I just felt like there was a lot of privilege there talking and that privilege was trying to control what people do. Like you don't get to t like you don't tell people to stay on the fucking sidewalk. You don't tell people not to engage with fascists like it's people's choice what they want to do. If a bunch of fascists were to show up, people have every right to confront them. And in fact, you should because that's basic community defense. People should do everything possible to keep fascists and other harmful, you know, types of people you know, from harming anybody. You got to keep them out. Ideally, you want to push them out of the space. But this is, again, typical liberal crap. Um, and that's what goes on. And it's not community defense. It's 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 not. It's it's just um, it, it's just a watering down of everything. And and I, I don't really see there would have been a point in taking the streets anyway, because you're at the Capitol on a Sunday. Nobody's there. What are you going to accomplish other than an exercise walk? And same thing with being on the sidewalk. It's literally nothing more than exercise. Nobody sees you. Nobody. There's nobody that sees you. Except maybe the few on 19th Avenue. That's it. Um, you know, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's, it's, it's like one of those things that it's designed to make people feel good. Like they make people feel like they accomplished something. But at the end of the day, that action and like the one I mentioned before, there's no actual direct action. And direct action is actually doing things in like direct things to challenge and resist the system that direct action generally means breaking the law so that means you get in the streets whether the cops tell you to or not i mean whether the cops say you can or not you get in the streets usually they say to get out of the streets and you tell them to fuck off and you stay in the streets right that's direct action uh direct action can be uh a number of things wheat pasting messages on walls of a building uh, sometimes spray painting political messages. Sometimes if a crowd's really angry about all the shit going on, people will break windows. And, you know, there's, there's different things people can do. Um, you know, I'm not advocating for or against anything, but 
you know, this 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 obsession with nonviolence and peace policing and keeping everything legal um, is generally a function of uh, very liberal people um, that really don't have an understanding of the history of this country and and actually how to change it um, or how to resist it rather. Um, you know, it's ultimately it's all it's all comes down to this very um, reformist politics. They believe that um, the the proper course of action for people to do is to go vote Democrat and to support local nonprofits, and that doesn't change a fucking thing. And that's been proven throughout the entire history of the United States. And I started to hear I, – I couldn't hear every word of this, but there was somebody that was going on about the founding fathers, and they were saying something about how like we got rights or something. They gave us rights. It was something like that. It was typical liberal bullshit, and I hear this when people, especially liberals, talk about, oh, you know, we have you know founding fathers and this and this. The founding fathers were white supremacists. Every single one of them was a white supremacist. Uh, many, if not most of them, were slave owners. And many, if not most of them, were behind the killing of indigenous people. And so when people talk about how, oh, America's like – and this is another liberal line. Oh, well, you know, things are getting really bad right now, but we need to make them better, you know, and like things weren't always this bad. Actually, things have always been bad in the United States. And like you have to remind people that this country was literally founded on the genocide of indigenous people and – anti-black slavery that's literally what it was founded on and these policies are still carried out slavery exists in prisons um indigenous people are still uh undergoing a, like a slow genocide through various government practices and behaviors um that's still happening uh just because it's not like throwing people in gas chambers doesn't mean it's not happening it is absolutely still happening and these white people for the most part and also People of color that are just conditioned into this kind of ultra-liberal, uh, pacifist kind of mentality um, don't really have a, a, an understanding. I mean, they don't. And so I don't want to go on too long, but it's just that action was not effective either. I mean, because you're having – so I'm going to give it a 0% effectiveness rate as well, both of these actions, because it's like, okay, there was a space where you could have your free speech and people could take photos and video and – and you know and so forth um and you can go for an exercise walk but that's literally all it was there was no there, there's no actual action taken and like the protest i talked about before instead of having this one at the capitol they could have had it in a downtown or very public area on a week on a week say an evening or a, or a night during the week find an area like say a, a ball game's happening downtown where there's thousands of people that's where you have your protest because you're getting people's attention. You're getting people engaged. You'll have people that absolutely agree with you, people that will stop what they're doing and listening to, and listen to what you have to say, and then people that will not like you or what you say or in some, you'll get your opposition too. But the whole point is you got to go out there to places where people can actually see you. And both of these did not. Like both of these were hidden behind – hidden in areas of the city that nobody's nobody's at. Nobody sees. And it, it really is kind of suspicious to me because it tells me either these organizers have no clue what they're doing or it's some kind of a counterinsurgency where it's deliberate, right? And and that's what the cops will do. Cops uh, cops try to encourage organizers that collaborate with them uh, if they march to pick routes that have the least visibility and to pick spaces that have the least visibility. I mean that's what they do. It's, it's literal counterinsurgency. This shit has been going on at least since the 1960s. And so anyway, I'm making this a little long, but it's like, you know, Phoenix, so-called Phoenix can do better than this. Like, for God's sakes, like, I don't have a problem with an or with a rally with a bunch of speakers, but call it that, a rally with speakers. Don't be calling it a protest or a march or anything like that if you're just going to have a walk around the block on a sidewalk, you know, and you're going to be in a place where nobody sees you. And you're just going to have a few speakers and that's it. That's that's ridiculous. Like, and for God's sakes, again, pick a place. Pick, an, pick a venue. Pick a place where you actually get the attention of people. And you can, you know, believe it or not, and there were hundreds of people this action. I mean, absolutely we could have taken the streets. With the amount we had, absolutely. Maybe not hundreds, but a good 200, maybe 300. Um, you know, not like 800, but like I would say a good maybe 300. Something, maybe 200, I don't know. 
but it, it, it's it's just it's absolutely ridiculous and Phoenix can do better but this has been a years and years long problem with Phoenix actions uh, a lot of the people that organize actions are brand new often even new to Phoenix they're just they don't have a history under their belt of attending actions they just kind of throw a rally without really any knowledge of, of what they're doing. And sometimes people are organizing shit in this manner that have been doing it for a long time, and it's just, it's sketchy. I'm sorry, like, why are you picking locations where nobody sees you? Why are you so afraid? Like I said, you can do things without breaking any laws and still make a huge impact. I mean, you can have an action on a bridge over a freeway during rush hour and put your banners and signs and all that stuff up so that all the traf all the people stuck in traffic below you can see you. You know, I mean, there's so many things you can do to make an impact, but like standing on the standing in places where nobody sees you. I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. Anyway, oh, and the last thing I'm going to say about both of these actions, because of the location, because of the um, the non doing, because of not really doing anything, um, like no direct action. Really, they both seemed very performative to me. So that's all I have to say. I hope you all are well. Salam alaikum.